Hello students, here I am with my new topic antigen processing and presentation. As you all know that T cell do not have the potential to capture, trap or mount immune response by itself against the antigens. So they need the help of other cell types either they can be they are called as antigen presenting cells or they are other altered body cells where a particular pathogen has attacked the cell and had altered its physiological functioning so these cells they first process these antigens and then subsequently they present these antigens with the help of major histocompatibility complex which are also called as mhc molecules to the t helper or t cytotoxic cells but first of all why t cytotoxic or t helper cells they are unable to recognize the antigens this is because these t cells they lack t cell receptors and thus they do not recognize free antigens and they recognize antigens which are bound to mhc molecules which are presented by either your antigen presenting cells or other self or target altered cells from the diagram it is clear that t cytotoxic cells they have receptor type cd8 positive and t helper cells they have receptor type cd4 positive and in between there is a red colored peptide substance it is basically a processed antigen fragments that is presented by either your class 1 or class 2 mhc molecules to your cd receptors on cd t helper or t cytotoxic cells Antigen presenting cells they are of uh, uh, different types such as dendritic cells, macrophages or B lymphocytes itself. And these antigens they are first involved with activation of these antigen presenting cells or these alter cells and subsequently they stimulate T cytotoxic cells or T helper cells to initiate a immune response that is broadly called as cell mediated immune responses but for this the source of antigen or the site from where antigen it is derived it is very important for these cells to process and further to present it to the T, C or T helper cells. So antigens, they can either be exogenous, they can either be endogenous antigens. Exogenous antigens, they are processed and presented by a pathway that is called as endocytic pathway or endo and endogenous antigens, they are processed and presented by a pathway that is called as cytosolic pathway. So now next is processing and presentation of endogenous antigens that involves cytosolic pathway. So endogenous antigens they are synthesized inside the cell from number of pathogens including virus bacteria or other parasites and their processing occur in the cytoplasm by a giant protein complex that is called as proteasome. Proteasome it is having a central channel or core having catalytic activity that cleave these large endogenous antigens into smaller peptides. Usually proteasome process the antigens which are basically ubiquitin associated or linked proteins. So first of first step for this pathway, the endogenous antigens they are first ubiquitinated at their lysine residue towards and terminal ends of large antigens, and then subsequently catalytic activity of proteasome cleave these into smaller peptides for about the length uh, that range from 10 to 20 amino acids on an average a 15 amino acids uh, short peptides they are synthesized and among these peptides there is processed antigen component that is also called as argitope and it is supposed to bind with MHC molecules during its subsequent expression on the cell surface. Now these smaller peptides they are further processed by cytosolic enzymes into uh, further smaller subunits and these smaller uh, peptides then along with ATP molecules are transported into the ER lumen through a type of transporter that is called as TAP and abbreviation of TAP is transporters associated with antigen processing and when these processed peptides enter inside ER lumen near 
tap site they interact with uh, a type of uh, chaperone molecules such as tapacin calnexin calreticulin etc and they form complex with then they form complex with mhc1 proteins and subsequent, subsequently the complex of peptides along with mhc1 lead to formation of complex and then this complex is released and it moves towards cell surface and where it integrates with cell membrane and it is subsequently recognized by T cytotoxic cells as I have told you earlier that first step for cytosolic pathway is ubiquitination that occur at lysine amino acids at end terminal ends of your endogenous antigens and here ubiquitin protein is covalently linked with your endogenous antigens and results into protein ubiquitin complex which is further degraded by central channel of proteasome having catalytic activity and it generates a variety of peptides averaging in size of 15 amino acid chain length so uh, with respect to the pathway exact pathway how your endogenous antigens they are processed and they are presented to the CD8 receptors on T cytotoxic cells. First, here look at in this uh, diagram, given diagram, endogenous antigens. First, they are ubiquitinated at their end terminal ends at specific lysine amino acid residues. And then this tagged endogenous antigen is cleaved or catalytically processed by assembly of proteins collectively called as proteasome into number of smaller peptides now these smaller peptides they are further subsequent in subsequent uh, process degraded by number of cytosolic and en enzymes into further sub smaller peptides and then subsequently these smaller peptides they are transported through atp molecules into the er lumen by a channel protein that is called as tap and here in the lumen of er this is a structure of er and this is its lumen here it is having already synthesized mhc molecule and its synthesis involves first your uh, mhc one molecule which is made up of two subunits alpha and beta subunits so alpha subunit it is there associated with your separate molecules and it is not assembled with beta 2 microglobulin but as soon as these smaller processed peptides enter inside the lumen of er they detach first separate molecules and subsequently binding of this peptide to alpha chain lead to assembly of beta 2 microglobulin subunit with mhc1 complex and this ultimately triggers the expression of these mhc molecules through vesicles from er to golgi body and from golgi body towards cell surface and subsequently here on the cell surface these are expressed but during progression here you can see this is basically it is having a loaded rg type of processed antigens to mhc1 molecule and it is having alpha chain and having beta 2 microglobulin and its association as i have told you earlier that association is important for expression of mhc1 molecules on membrane surface and it is basically a trigger that is required there for its expression on the cell surface and then your vesicle fuse with target membrane and it is expressed on the surface of cells and here exposed mhc1 along with processed antigens are presented to the cd8 receptor on t cytotoxic cells And now the next pathway is endocytic pathway that is also involved for processing and presentation of exogenous antigens to the T helper cells. So here processed antigens are they are presented to T helper cells and it involves the processing of foreign antigens having extracellular origin that may be extracellular parasite or microbes. First they are endocytosed by your Endo, uh, antigen presenting cells and their fusion with lysosomes lead to synthesis of another type of vesicular structure that is called as endosome and these endosome 
they are have they are rich in acidic environment and hydrolytic enzymes that for, uh, further subsequently cleave these into smaller peptides and this is subsequently a process that is called as processing of antigens here this processing of antigens it is different from that of endocytic pathway and it is also different in other way because here these processed antigens they do not enter into er or golgi body while in case of cytosolic pathway or endogenous antigens the processed antigens they were supposed to enter er lumen and then subsequently golgi body and vesicles and then to, to the surface of the cell but here these processed antigens in endocytic pathway they do not enter into er or golgi body and in parallel to this mhc2 proteins they are already synthesized or assembled in er and then subsequently they are transported through vesicles to the golgi body and then subsequently they are stored in the vesicles and here there is an important point to note down that during synthesis of mhc2 proteins two uh, uh, two chains that is alpha and beta chains they are synthesized and assembled but they are antigen binding cleft or peptide binding cleft it is covered by a part of or component of clip that is a part of invariant chain it is integrated or it is inserted to this mhc2 molecules during its synthesis in the er and during its movement through golgi body it is degraded and there is remaining part clip i will discuss this one in the subsequent flow diagram from the diagram you can see that exogenous antigens first there is endocytic pathway it is switched on and exogenous antigens they are inside the cell within the vesicle and in parallel to this mhc2 molecules they are synthesized inside the er and here alpha chain this is alpha chain and this is beta chain these alpha and beta chains and th this is antigen binding cleft or peptide binding cleft it is covered by invariant chain and then subsequently vesicular through vesicular anterior grade movement this complex enters into the golgi body and from golgi body it is released from its trans site and here you can see it is degraded and you have just a part of invariant chain that is called as clip c l i p clip and it cover peptide binding cleft of mhc2 and these vesicles and this uh, they contain these already synthesized mhc2 molecules but when exogenous ant uh, antigens they enter inside the cell and they uh, they are released into in the form of a vesicle these vesicles they fuse with first fuse with lysosome and then subsequently they fuse with this mhc2 covered with cliff containing vesicles and here there occur release of cliff from mhc2 complex and subsequently binding of uh, red colored binding of processed antigens to its site on mhc2 molecule and when this clip is released from mhc2 molecules and antigen processed antigen bind with mhc2 molecules it act as a trigger same trigger b beta 2 microglobulin in case of cytosolic pathway and here it is binding of processed antigens to mhc2 molecule and release of cliff protein it cause further movement of these vesicles towards target membrane and fusion of this vesicle lead to expression of processed antigens with the help of class 2 mhc molecules on the surface of the cell and subsequently from here these cells they present these processed antigens to the t helper cells through cd4 receptors and this is all about antigen processing and presentations that involve cytosolic and endocytic pathway where antigens are first processed through catalytic activities of enzymes and subsequently they are presented to cd receptors on either t helper or t cytotoxic cells thank you